Hey guys, what is up? Today we are continuing the Build a PC series. Last time we talked about graphics cards, CPUs. Today is all about RAM. So I'll be teaching you how to choose RAM for your dream build. My name is Riley. Cue that club music. So RAM is one of the most exciting topics and most important topics I think we should be talking about when building or even upgrading a computer and this is why. RAM is one of those special things that even on some super restrictive Apple hardware you can almost always upgrade your RAM. Even in laptops you can almost upgrade your RAM. RAM is one of those universal things that is easy to upgrade and you can almost upgrade for anything that you have without any trouble at all. Also, RAM is one of those things that, in my opinion, you can't really bottleneck too easily. RAM can bottleneck other things, but other things can't really bottleneck the RAM. So even if you have like a really high amount of RAM, you can almost always use that without it being bottlenecked by another component. And this is really exciting because it's one of the few things on a computer that do that. So that's really cool and I think that's really exciting about RAM. So keeping that in mind, we're going to be talking about determining your uses and price point, compatibility, speed, where to start, and a couple things I think you should keep in mind when actually buying RAM. But first, before we do all that, I'm going to tell you what RAM actually is, just so you know, just so you're informed. RAM is basically the short-term memory of your computer. If you think about an SSD or hard drive as the long-term memory, then RAM is really the short-term memory. So all your programs and stuff are obviously going to be installed on your long-term memory, the SSD or hard drive. But when you open those, the CPU is actually going to create temporary data within the RAM. And it's in that RAM for quicker use, so whenever it's needed, the CPU can just grab it and use it. It's a lot quicker than being stored on an SSD or hard drive. And that's really why RAM is such an important thing. Otherwise, it all have to be stored on an SSD or hard drive and your computer would be so, so much slower. And that's why when you upgrade the RAM for your computer, it's generally going to make it a lot quicker and snappier because it has more room for that temporary storage. So keeping that in mind, first thing we're going to be talking about is determining your uses and price point. I, in my previous videos, those were separated into two topics, but for this one, I converged it into one. This is because I really think that RAM isn't that expensive. Even for a good amount of RAM, it's only going to be $120 max. So if you can, you should always be trying to get as much RAM as you can because like I said earlier, it doesn't really get bottlenecked that much. There are some special cases where it can be bottlenecked, but those are few and far between. And having more RAM is never really going to be a bad thing. So determining your uses and price point is important, but it's not super important. If you're going for a super budget build, then yeah, you're going to want to like get some lower number of RAM. But if you're just building a build, RAM is something that even for an extra $25, you should almost always go for just because you never know in the future when you might need it. So the next thing we're going to be talking about is compatibility. And this can seem a little tricky at first, but by the time you're done with this topic, I promise it's not going to be hard. So the first thing you're going to look for is the motherboard. And what I mean by that is if your motherboard states that it's compatible with DDR RAM or DDR2 or DDR3 or DDR4, you have to get that kind of RAM. You can't put a stick of DDR4 RAM, which is the newest, into an older DDR3 motherboard. It won't fit. They have, it's like processors. It has to fit within that motherboard. So if you have DDR4 RAM, you need a motherboard that supports DDR4 RAM. So the way you can do that is check online or your user manual for your motherboard and look at that, see what it has. If you have a manufacturer made, uh, desktop or laptop then you can just go and look up online you should be able to find it or if you came with a user manual find it there but that's something you need to look for also you need to make sure that there are enough slots on your motherboard and what I mean by that is there are generally going to be about four slots where you can stick RAM in your motherboard 
So you need to make sure that you're only buying that number. You don't want to get six sticks of RAM and then only have four slots because those other two sticks of RAM aren't going to go anywhere and you're just going to be wasting your money. So you need to probably open up your computer and find out if that's okay with you. Next thing under compatibility is the speed and we'll be getting into the speed a little bit later in the next topic but you need to make sure that the speed on your RAM which is going to be measured in megahertz matches the max speed that your CPU supports. So generally it'll be about like 3000 megahertz for your RAM that needs to be the max speed of the processor. It should say max speed is 3000 megahertz. If it's not, you need to get RAM that matches that max speed. You can go over or lower, but it might void your warranty on your CPU, which is something you probably don't want to do. And next thing we're going to be talking about is the speed itself. So the first thing you're probably going to notice when you're buying RAM is the number of gigs. And more is going to be better. So 16 gigabytes of RAM is going to be better than 8 gigabytes of RAM. That just means that there's more room for that storage to go. Remember, it's temporary storage. So the more room you have for that storage, the more you can put there and the faster things are going to be. So more gigabytes is going to be better. The next thing under speed is what we were just talking about, is the speed in megahertz. Once again, more is going to be better, but you want to always match that with the max speed of your CPU. So even though you might find some RAM that says, I don't even know the numbers off the top of my head, 4200 megahertz of RAM, you're going to want to get 3000 if that's the max speed that your CPU uh, supports. Otherwise you might void that warranty like I said. If you're like a power user and you want to try to get the max performance, yeah you probably can go over but that's a risk that you're going to have to take yourself and I, I wouldn't recommend that honestly myself. So the next thing I'm going to be talking about is where to start. And like I said before, you're going to find the max speed that the CPU supports. So that way you already got the speed of the RAM that you want and you got that down good. The next thing is going to be the max memory allowed in your motherboard. So make sure that you're only getting the number of sticks that there are slots in your motherboard. That's what we were talking about earlier. And then you also want to make sure that it is the DDR4 or the DDR3 that your motherboard supports. So when you know that, you should be able to look up 3000 megahertz, 16 gigabytes of RAM and on Google and it should pull up things and you should be able to choose RAM from there. So the next thing and final thing we're going to be talking about is some couple of things that I think you should be keeping in mind at all points when you're buying RAM and that's that RAM is sold in packs of two or four generally. You're never just going to be sold just one stick of RAM. So if you're getting 16 gigabytes of RAM, you're not going to find a stick of 16 gigabytes. It's going to be sold in two sticks of eight because eight plus eight is going to be 16. So that's really important because remember on your motherboard, you're only going to have so many slots. You need to make sure that they're matching up. The next thing is that you're always going to want to get the max gigs per stick that you can. So let's stick with this example. If you're getting 16 gigabytes of RAM, it's better to get two sticks of eight than it is to get four sticks of four. This is because if you get the four sticks of four gigabytes of RAM and you install that in all the open slots on your motherboard, it's going to be fine for right now. But in the future, when you want to upgrade, you're going to have to take out some of those sticks of RAM. Whereas if you got two sticks of eight gigabytes, you'd still have those two available slots that you could just stick in that new memory. And this is really about future proofing. It's not going to affect you right now, but in the future it may, and you don't want to kick yourself in the butt for the future. And the last thing I want to say is that you can almost never go wrong with RAM. I kind of touched on this in the beginning, but you just, you want to get more RAM. It's really hard to bottleneck. The more RAM you have, generally the faster your things are going to be. Even if you're a light user, maybe you just browse the web all day or watch some YouTube or something like that. You never know when you might be doing something that's pretty intensive and having that RAM can help it speed, help speed your computer up. 
So getting more RAM is never a bad thing, and like I said, it only costs a little bit more. Maybe like $25 to double the amount of RAM that you would have had before. So really, that's all I have to say. I hope you enjoyed this video and learned something. If you did, leave a thumbs up. If you didn't, leave a thumbs down and tell me in the comments why, and I will see. If you didn't, I will see.